Hey, what's up everyone? I'm Theo Guy and it is almost 2017. 2016 is just about over. We had a lot of crazy stuff come out in 2016 and I think 2017 is gonna be just as exciting. So in this video, we're gonna go over, I got about six different trends that I think you're gonna to wanna to watch in 2017 tech trends that I think are just going to be big in the next year. So that's what we're going to go over. And as usual, it's time to shill for the likes and comments. As you guys know that the uh, the YouTube algorithm, if I don't beg for likes, the videos don't get any views. You can see, you know, look at the difference here. So if you guys could like or comment at any point in this video, if you liked it, oh God, it's not happening. Guys, you got to like the video before it's too late. Oh my God. Oh shit. Oh. Like the video. Oh, oh shit. Ooh, thought I was a goner there. Enough talking, let's get started. So first having to do with TVs. Now last year I predicted that HDR would be way more common and I think I was right on that one. So this year I'm gonna predict that OLEDs are gonna be even more common. I think OLED is gonna become really the standard. And the reason I say that is because right up until now, LG has been basically the only TV manufacturer that has been making OLED TVs. And that is because they kind of have the whole OLED manufacturing process locked down. There's not really any other companies that do it. But Sony is rumored, strongly rumored, to be partnering with LG to have a deal to kind of use their manufacturing line to produce their own TVs. So we're not just gonna have LG anymore, but also Sony, and I bet that we're gonna see a lot of other manufacturers that have maybe already been working on their own OLED line or will be soon. So I think OLEDs are gonna really take off because I personally think OLEDs look the best. I mean, look, LCD LEDs are good, but OLEDs are just another level altogether and they just have the potential to become even better as well because they do have that incredible dynamic range. So I think 4K OLED, even if they're not super affordable right now, even though they're way more affordable than they were before, I think we're gonna see OLEDs become the standard. Next, I think smart home is gonna be huge, okay? It's already blowing up. We know that Amazon Echo from Amazon is already really popular. They released the extremely affordable Echo Dot, just 50 bucks for all that smart home and assistance and virtual assistance. And then also Google jumped in the game and you know if Google's jumping in the game, it's gonna be big just from people with the brand recognition, people are gonna get interested if Google jumps in the game. So I think there's gonna be a lot of companies that are gonna start doing smart home apps, smart home integrations, even if it's something that didn't necessarily make sense to be smart home before, like a microwave or something like that. Not all of it will make sense, but it's still gonna be way more common. And I'm very excited because I have both Google Home and Amazon Echo. I think they're awesome. The only issue right now is not a lot of stuff supports it yet. So when they do, it's gonna be amazing. And also kind of going off with that, with the virtual assistants, we know that AI is also gonna be very important. Google is making their AI very integral in the Google Assistant with Google Home, so you don't have to necessarily say a specific command to get it to do what you wanna do. It can kind of actually interpret things. So it would be really awesome if these different assistants would be able to integrate into services even if they're not necessarily natively supported. If they could just interpret what you mean and if they can figure out a way using AI to do what you want, that would be really incredible and that is the future. You know it's gonna happen eventually. It's just gonna be like a Jarvis where you ask it to do something, even if it doesn't know how, it can do a Google search to figure out how and then it will try to do its best. Maybe a little bit of years off, but I think we're moving towards that. And speaking of technology being integrated into our lives, I think the next big thing is going to be cybersecurity. We know that at this point, password breaches are almost to be expected. It's like almost a matter of time before your favorite website gets hacked and you have to change your password. That's why I always suggest using a password manager that randomly generates passwords. So if something gets stolen, then you don't have to worry about all your other sites getting stolen as well. I think cybersecurity companies and ones that are able to invent new innovative security techniques are gonna be huge. So example would be antivirus. We know that heuristics is a type of antivirus where it doesn't just look at a definition where it's a very specific file, but it actually can analyze what the actual virus or file is doing to figure out if it's a virus in the first place. So that kind of goes along with AI. Maybe Google will jump into that 
and actually try and do what a human would do, where if you see a pop-up come up on your screen, it's probably a virus, and then you know to try and remove it, and antivirus software doesn't necessarily know to do that. But not just that, is also enterprise security, because we know with all the talk about Russian hackers this year, there is gonna be a lot of paranoia from now on about who's next. I mean, if they can hack the government, then they can hack anyone, right? Or, I don't know, some people would argue that the government security is a lot worse than uh, corporate, but we could talk about that another day. Still, I think cybersecurity is gonna be a big seller, even if it's just from people who might not need it, but still want to feel safe. Another big trend I see going forward in 2017 is smart cars and smart technology. Not just self-driving cars, although we have seen that kind of catapult the whole industry forward with Tesla especially, we saw them create their whole autopilot thing and it's just getting better, even though there's a few hiccups with people crashing it by doing it when they're not supposed to. But I think the whole idea that you can have a car that basically drives itself in a lot of situations, it kind of gets people thinking, hmm, I mean, if they can do that, what else is possible? So we'll see a lot of integration, not just with the car themselves, but also other third-party services. So maybe home automation. When you come home, the car will talk to your home, maybe even be able to detect who's in the car based on your phone, and so turn on those people's lights in their rooms and stuff like that. Just off the top of my head, all sorts of fun stuff. Though we do see a lot of companies getting into self-driving cars. I think it was Ford that announced that within about five years, they want to create a completely autonomous self-driving car that's just no driver required at all. It might be a little bit ways off from that, probably more than five years before they become common at all. But I think that they're even making that attempt to create a schedule for that is, I mean, we know that the future's here at this point, right? So I think that if not this year, then the next year's for sure, it's just gonna be an exponential increase in what your cars can do, I think they're gonna be used a lot more for just driving because you'll actually be able to get work done and stuff in it. So it'll almost just be like a car is now part of your office or part of your house or something like that. It just happens to move, if that makes sense. I don't know, maybe that's too back of the future, but either way, in 2017, there's gonna be major advances and I'm excited. Next up, I think is gonna be virtual reality and possibly augmented reality. I think they're gonna go mainstream. So we had the Oculus Rift launch this year, the HTC Vive, the PlayStation VR, all those came out in the same year. It's an amazing year for virtual reality. And I think that the more people that try it, word of mouth is gonna get around and people are gonna say how awesome and incredible virtual reality is. And I think especially with Microsoft announcing that they're gonna be producing very affordable virtual reality headsets with other manufacturers like Acer, where you just hook it up to your Windows PC. It doesn't even have to be for gaming. I think virtual reality is gonna hit the mainstream. The average person is gonna know what it's all about, at least try it, and once they try it, they're gonna want it. Now, it's just gonna be a matter of if they can make it practical. Because yeah, it's awesome. It really does feel like you're in a virtual world, but at this point, it's really just good for gaming, I would say. I think anything else is kind of gimmicky. Now, I do have HoloLens, I will say it's awesome it's truly incredible i've made other videos about this it really does look like it's projecting holograms in front of you they do have awesome tracking better than expected and if they can produce a much wider field of view it's going to be world changing i do not doubt that but the only issue is there's not that much actual useful stuff and the developer kit costs like three thousand dollars so until we see a consumer version it's not gonna hit the mainstream. But I think if Microsoft can come up with actually useful business applications, especially where you can get that executive saying, oh yeah, this might actually be useful in business, then we're gonna start to see the average person getting those and using them in day to day. And seeing how fast virtual reality has moved in just the past year, I think it's gonna be very surprising what we're gonna find in 2017. Now, finally, this is a hope for me. It's not something that I'm predicting, but I am hoping that in 2017, we're gonna get some big improvements to smartphones. I don't know about you guys, but I think the past year has kind of been pretty meh in terms of smartphones. I mean, we already have a lot of the stuff that you could ever hope for in a smartphone. We got, you know, waterproofed, it's got 
pretty good cameras. I don't know if you can improve the cameras much more than they already have been. We got high resolution screens, fingerprint readers. It's almost like, what's next? I think that if companies wanna keep selling smartphones, because if I am correct, smartphone sales have been increasing at a decreasing rate. So I think smartphone manufacturers are gonna realize, look, we need to do something big if we want these sales to keep going up or else people are just gonna think, you know what, we, I don't need to upgrade. This new phone doesn't do much more than what I can already do. I'm hoping that improvement is gonna be battery life because that has been definitely the biggest issue with smartphones and really any devices. Batteries have been notoriously difficult to design and battery density has only been going up a tiny fraction of what we've seen in computing power. So if we could get a battery that lasts a week, can you imagine what kind of additional power would be stuffed into phones if power wasn't an issue, or battery life wasn't an issue rather? I mean, I can't even fathom it. It would be incredible. I'm hoping, I'm not too hopeful because I know that battery technology is something that they're obviously working on and it's very difficult, but if there was some other killer feature that I haven't even imagined yet, I'm hoping they're gonna do something like that with phones. We'll have to see. So I think that's it. That's all I wanna speculate on. It's mostly just theory. I talked about the general trends, but also some specifics that I'm hoping for. And if you guys have any suggestions as well, if I missed something, if you think that there's gonna be something huge that no one is talking about, let us know down in the comments section. And again, if you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up. It really does help. The last videos where I had to beg for likes actually worked, got lots of views. You guys actually got to see them if you subscribed. So it helps out and it'll make it so I can produce better videos in the future if they actually get views. And of course, if you do wanna subscribe, I make new videos three times a week, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday, usually on that schedule. And so it should be worth it. And also, if you wanna keep watching, I'll put some other videos right here. You can click on these even if you're on a phone. So hopefully you'll enjoy those. So I'm looking forward to hearing from you guys. Let me know what you think. And of course, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Have a good one.